What is the first image that comes to your mind when you think of baguettes? For me, it's being in a Paris street outside a boulangerie, smelling the fresh bread being made, and watching someone right away with a baguette tucked under their arm on this old bike that you're made that still works. But that image is so evocative. When I think of a baguette, I think of, of Paris. But baguettes aren't just a Paris thing. You know, as you travel around the world, you're going to find in Vietnam, they have incredible baguettes. You know, probably the French influence. And even in Tahiti, in French Polynesia, the baguettes are amazing. And a little trivia, they're regulated by the government that baguettes can't cost more than roughly 50 cents a piece. And they're amazing. Hey, we're going to be cooking baguettes. Like a bastard. Look like a bastard today. Great baguettes take some time. The first step we're going to do today is called autolysis. Now, not all recipes have it, but in my experience, it makes for a much better bread. In fact, King Arthur says this is where the magic happens. And you know here at Cook Like a Bastard, it's all about the magic. So we start with 500 grams of flour. That's about three and a half cups. And three quarters of a teaspoon of diastatic malt. Now, this is optional, but I think it really makes the bread. It's a little tough to find. I found mine at a brewery. So, you know, have a beer and get some diastatic malt. That's not a bad idea. And then we are going to take um, one half teaspoon of instant yeast. And then we're going to mix up our dry ingredients. We're going to be adding one and two thirds cup of water, but we first want to make sure all the ingredients are mixed up so it's well, well distributed. Then after we do that, we pour the water in. And this is a very basic mixing we're doing here. We're not even really thinking about kneading. And this is gonna be a really a wet dough too. You're, you're going to um, learn that soon while you're playing with it. It's gonna be sticky and there's gonna be a lot of great things to do with it. So you're really just trying to mix it up, make sure there's no flour on the side of the bowl and that it's all starting to come together. Because this is going to sit for about 30 minutes. I left the dough sit for 30 minutes while the autolysis process happened. And we have a very moist and shaggy dough right here. And what we're going to do, we're going to add one tablespoon of salt just gonna mix in a little bit by hand here before we put it on our, our mixer. And we're gonna mix it at medium for about five minutes. I'm going to use my dough hook. So after five or six minutes, the dough is looking really great. As you see, it's pulled from the side here. We're gonna turn off our mixer. And I won't shout so loud and talk over it. But just see how, what a wet dough this is. And this is the way it's supposed to be. So let's get this out of here. I'm just gonna do it out of here. We've oiled this bowl. We get all the baguette goodness out of here. I don't wanna miss one inch of this baguette. So you cover it up with plastic. So I cover up with plastic and we put it in my proofing oven for about an hour. If you don't have a proofing oven, just put it in a nice warm place and it's going to double up and you're going to be making a baguette like a bastard. Kind of like the alliteration, don't you? Thought you did. We'll be right back. So we've let our dough rise for about an hour. It's roughly doubled in size. I'm going to punch it down and it's still very soft and pliable and kind of marshmallow-like. So after doing that, I'm going to take it out of here and it all comes out. I'm going to actually weigh it um, because I'm not really good at cutting things the same size, which you may have seen in some of our previous bread episodes here. So it's about 800 milligrams. So I'm going to make this and I'm going to cut into what I think are three equal sizes. So we take our dough, approximately the same size piece of dough. Make sure we have enough flour on here. Let me stretch it out and make a rectangle. It's very sticky dough and wet dough and very elastic. So you're going to have to 
spend some time getting it and stretching it out here. So once you have your rectangle, fold it in halfway. And then from the back side away from you, you roll it in. And while you're rolling it in, you're making it tight, but you're also stretching it out just a little bit. Cover them up and let them sit for 20 minutes to an hour. You can just use a towel or plastic. I prefer plastic. So we let the dough rise for another, it was actually about 35 minutes. Um, we've kept them covered with plastic. Again, the dough is very marshmallowy. So we now, what we do here, and we move a couple of these out of the way a little bit. And we take this and then we flatten it out. We wanna push, make sure we push all the air out of it. And then we fold it in about two thirds of the way. And then we flip her around. Then we do it again. So you're flipping it over because two thirds and two thirds is more than more than a whole. So there you go, a little math lesson here and cook like a bastard. So put these things out and it's going to be 14 inches. So you, you want to roll it so it's tight. And it's 14 inches, and I know with my little tray here that the little circle things are 14 inches. It's gonna be a little bit bigger, that's okay. Let me just put it in here. Seam side down. I think that looks good, we're gonna do it again. So we flatten these out, push all the air out of them, and then fold it in, two thirds, flip it, do another two thirds, and then we roll it toward ourselves, make it tighter. And you make sure you have a nice shape, a nice tapered end. Remember the seam size goes, goes down when you're doing this. So take a look at them, see how they feel. Need to adjust them a little bit, don't overwork them. And we let them sit and they're going to rise for another 45 minutes to an hour here and cook like a bastard. So we've gone through our final rise on these things and we are going to put four slashes in them about a quarter inch deep. And you do this to let the bread vent and not explode and grow the proper way for you. So I am cooking these, today, baking these today in my Anova Precision Oven. It's a combi steam on, oven and it's great for making bread, but if you have a Traditional oven, that's fine. You just bake it at 475 degrees, put a pan of water in there, and it's going to be happy. But the cool thing about this is that this oven right here is cooking at 475 degrees with 100% steam. And we're going to put this in here, and it's going to be in there for five minutes. And then um, it is going to magically stop putting the steam and then go up to its baking temperature at 500, 475 degrees. Technology is an amazing thing, huh? We got it here on Cook, like a bastard. So our baguettes are done baking. I'm gonna take them out and let them cool. Woo, a lot of steam in there. Wow, those are pretty, aren't they? The thing about baguettes, and boy, you're sitting at these beautiful things right here, and you know, you know more than anything, you want to bite into it. <sighs> Patience, my friend. You gotta let these guys cool, else we'll be a mess. Oh, I wanna do this. You don't have to trust me, they're good. We made baguettes, like a bastard. Everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and the directions are right down below in the description.